Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Want to remind everybody before we dive into today's comic that we do have a Patreon now. There are three different levels that will give you access to our videos early. And at the King Kayfaber level, you can actually sit in on our recording session, which is usually a lot of fun. So check that out, see which level works for you, and get a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. Because I'm sure there are some books we look at that you want to add to your collection, be the first ones in line. Also, these videos are brought to you by the comics that we make. We're both working cartoonists. You can see our bibliography on the screen right now. We've got some big books coming out this year that you are going to want to pre-order or pick up as soon as they get out. Ed Piscor's Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus will be out later this year. Pre-orders do now, man. Put your name on this thing because it's probably going to sell out quickly. And it takes a while to print these big books. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus collects all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips plus 140 extra pages brand new for the collection. So... You're going to want that for you and the hip-hop fan in your life. Red Room is starting its third season, Crypto Killers. There'll be four self-contained issues coming out monthly once this begins very soon. There is the cover to issue number one, cover to issue number two. You can also pick up the Red Room trade paperbacks, volumes one and two. You can pick up the original Hip-Hop Family Tree, Treasury Size Editions, X-Men Grand Design, three volumes and an omnibus, and WYSIWYG. My next book is Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. This will be out this summer from Image Comics, collecting all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image. Together, the two books will collect the entire Street Angel library. So add that one to your shelf. You can also pick up Hulk Grand Design and The Plain Janes. So, Ed, we are looking at Eric Powell's Goon. I believe this is the color special number one. A couple issues had come out from Avatar, yeah. and then uh, I guess he was unhappy with the quality of those. So, self-publishes this. Uh, so, one of the very early Goon comic books, and um, Goon, a big hit, man. It's been being published pretty much since the late 90s. Uh, sometimes self-published, sometimes with Dark Horse. This is my first Goon comic that I have read. So, so you mean that Dirk Albatross is not is not the publisher of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that's probably um, Eric having some fun, not just in the comics making, but also in the uh, backstory behind the comics making. So, scoop this up off the racks. 2001, 2002, uh, it's that era where you could you could buy everything that's not Marvel and DC that looks interesting, man. I bought your Street Angel uh, mini around this same time, and this was... And that was a hit to me, like like full chops uh, involved and stuff. And this comes out of nowhere, so developed, so tight. Uh, I couldn't believe what I, what I was seeing. Full color, which is very atypical of the day. It was speaking to a lot of stuff that I was into, like this technique with the painting, very much in a school of Basil Gogos, the the painter. Uh, extraordinaire of famous monsters of film land yep. it's a little more subdued because what basil would do is like this green color would be so much more in the shading and lighting on the character but powell does such a good job of that he does a little bit of work on that too uh this comic to me you know i i don't keep up i'll be i'll be honest i do not keep up but i'm so glad that he's out there doing his thing because it was so clear to me from this uh, reading and scooping this up that this is another cartoonist. It's very rare who they create their exact vehicle of all the stuff that they right. want to draw. It makes me think of Mark Schultz with Xenozoic Tales, Jeff Darrow, Shaolin Cowboy, uh, Mignola and Hellboy. Sure, sure. He's like he's like so much more professional with, with the stuff, man. But like, there are these there are these guys that like they create the exact sort of vehicle for all their interest, and you could just tell that he's having a freaking ball making these comics. Yeah, zombies, monsters, um, old cars. Yeah, like a noir kind of element, almost like that PI or problem solver type character. A lot of a lot of fun elements. To put together if you're going to be like, I'm going to create my sandbox, I'm going to have some fun here. It's exactly what you're describing. And those are some of my favorite comics. It's weird that I haven't read this up to this point because it is something I'm aware of and I've always thought it looked good. But uh, look, it's the nature of whenever I say there's too many good comics to read them all, 
This is one of the victims, so I'm glad to rectify that. I think I think the first SPX you took me to was uh, was 2003, and he was set up there. Oh, interesting. And and uh, I couldn't wait to talk to him because I, I I don't think Dark Horse picked this up by then or anything like that. It was just this, and maybe another Albatross comic or something. And uh, Albatross is that uh, self publishing is an Albatross <laughs> <laughs> at some level. <laughs> But uh, everything I basically just said, I, I said to him, and, and I was super shy, super humble. He was super shy, super humble. And I just like, I just uh, had to tell him that like, I could tell that you are just having so much fun making these pages and it, and it really comes off, comes off the page. It communicates so well to the reader. Yeah. And I don't know his um, bibliography before he gets to this point, but he had done some comics, I know. Is and uh, and you look at the the kind of the quality it's not someone's first comic. You know what I mean? Like you can see like this is really impressive. Every couple of years it happens to me, man. We're like, I, you know, I went to the racks and I saw this, never heard of him, never heard of the goon and was like, where did you come from? Yeah. You know? So our story opens with this guy who has stolen uh, about $8 million in, in coins and he's gonna hide him in this this haunted house, and and it's a brutal hunt. It's like oh yeah, it's, it's like it's a rough story. incestual inbreeding <laughs> house, and like nobody ever left. There's a reason that you don't want to go into this house. But uh, our our guy gets befouled by a beam in the basement when he's trying to bury his treasure. He's now trapped in there, and here are our haunted house residents there to uh, torture him and make sure the end of him is is very very unpleasant. <laughs> and you see like great spotting of blacks, really good with inks. I think that uh, Powell's pretty good in a lot of media because oh, I've yeah. seen stuff of like washes and pencils, and we saw the painted cover. So yeah, quite a visual artist. Yeah, you're gonna see cafe bads in here, and and uh, it, it rings as true as like an Acme novelty cafe bad, really. And, and then you get some poppy color, right? It's a great intro to your character, right? If this is the first issue for a lot of readers, and I think it was, man, that screams fun. Totally. You know, if you're flipping through this on on, on the stands trying to figure out if you're going to buy it, you probably decide you're going to take this one home once you get to this page. And we've got a crazy old lady, like, stomping in the mud and handing him this kind of trinket of cat eyes and stuff. Just bizarre, kind of out there. But you're uh, up for anything whenever it starts out with a gigantic squid on your car. Right. Kind of sets the tone right away of anything goes in this book. Yeah, anything goes. You got like a little dude with the button eyes. So coming straight out of like kind of comic strips. Absolutely. And here's your kayfabe ad for like a uh, a kind of Aurora model kit mm-hmm. head gimmick. Billy lobotomy kit. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, and we've got, you know, Goon is just hanging out with his buddy at the bar, which I think may be pretty typical of uh, Goon life. He's hunting for this one guy, though, this zombie character, and uh, trades a favor at the bar for somebody who will give him a tip on where he can find this dude. Nails him to a fucking wooden fence or something, a, wall, a, a wooden wall. And it, it looks good, man. Like, the drawing of it, he he sells it well. Yeah. Yeah, at first I thought it might have been he was nailing him to the floor. Me too, but and the it was perspectives just be are this, weird uh, enough. Right, right. Either way, though, um, quite the drawing. Here's your Andrew Loomis volume of a figure in perspective. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, this guy's trying to give up anything he can to, to get out of the situation. So he tells a story about that coin haul and the rumors that there's a treasure buried. I like how Goon's face is all chewed up, too. Yeah, he's been through some things. Yeah, reminds me a little bit of Marv at times. And uh, one I'm, of the other... I was going to say Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> um but as we get into this, like, you're going to see little hints of Kirby, too. Like, he's so adept at certain of these, like, the ink stuff's just really impressive. It is. You know, as a fan of various inkers, I feel like this dude knows what he's doing with that. It's a nice panel, too. You're set up for, like, going into that house. And how good would this panel look in black and white? Because this is all open, you know? Like, it would really be like there's a fog between Goon and that haunted house. It, it, like... I uh, I think he probably is one of the great black and white artists. You never see it. There's always color on his stuff, and I, I don't think it needs it. And in some places, I even feel like it's muddy. You know, some of those blues are very dark, and I don't think it does it the work of service. But, like, as a pen and ink, or brush and ink illustrator, it's super solid. The marks there on the underside of Goon's arm, that's where I start to see Kirby. And mm-hmm. there'll be another panel later on, but it's just these little ticks, you know, and it probably speaks to his fandom as, as a comics maker. These apparitions that are going to pop up, they're line drawings. So it's one more of those, like, what can you do in, in your drawing that is expressive? And we'll see a few versions of that that really stand out. The sound effects behind the character, something that's used a couple of times very well in this issue. 
and everybody, Goon and his partner, they're seeing stuff in this house. Yeah. This this house is is haunted in a very uh, palpable way. That's pretty fun. <laughs> and then we're cut through with like weird like I don't know what ads. this is. This yeah. is a bizarre like interlude, like a commercial, but but very strange. And now back to reality, if you can call that reality. <laughs> Goon thinks he's killed his buddy, but that's not actually what happened. So kind of a trippy story here to uh, to launch this series and this character. Nice lettering. I'm so curious to see the Avatar stuff. Yeah, it makes me because makes me because too. because uh, you know it's not like he had so many pages under his belt before this, as far as I know. So like, it's not like he could have been that much cruder. I don't know if he's you know unhappy with his own work i think it might have been the reproduction because what else would you be complaining about if you didn't like the way something looked it has to be just the well the no, no, print, no, the production no, right no you were saying that, that he was around and stuff oh like yeah that. yeah uh, he's in um and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not positive who this is but like hart fisher published him or like one of those kinds of like black and white publishers published him like i have some some versions of it from that those days so a couple of years before this he would have done some stuff right and you're not talking about the Avatar goon? No, like, no, no, no. He did some other stuff. Okay. I don't know if it would be work for hire exactly, but kind of like the anthology stuff. It's, you know how people used to float through some sure. of those black and white anthologies? Because it's a years, couple years of disparity. Like, like the Avatar shit is 1999, and this is 2002. Yeah. Yeah, the thing that I read is that he waited for the contract to run out. So I don't Smart. know what, what the terms of that were. But, I mean, I assume it's a reproduction issue more than anything else, but I could be wrong. And this is one of those like Kirby-esque moments, kind of based on just an action shot. But a couple of these marks down around the ankles and stuff, I feel like have a little bit of that shading. There's a, such a sound an anatomical knowledge Very though, solid. with this because this hip is pivoted this way so clearly. The top is pivoted its own way. And there's that middle piece that everybody forgets about where the hip is not connected to the top, but you see that there's that pivot there. Yeah. Yeah, it just feels so solid to me. Yeah. And as a panel, flows perfectly. Good stuff. The Even the wind stretch. Up, yeah, you know, exactly. Like that fist is starting from the right side and going over, or starting from the left side and going over to the right side, so you get that nice range of motion as you read down the page. Yeah, and you got the, the stretch and squash right there. Yeah, it makes me want to read more Goon. <laughs> they they come home with the bounty man and the guy's like buying panties or something <laughs> at a, at an auction. <laughs> He's a little pervert. Of course. Yeah, of course. So he's not limited, I guess, to uh, two-dimensional media. Sculpted by Eric Powell, if you want a uh, goon bust. And that that's a moment in time, too. Like when, you know, we all, we all got into uh, the internet by way of America Online. And then you get fucking hoodwinked into keeping your AOL address because you're already making business deals and shit and you want to be stay in contact with people like this aol.com shit lasted a good 10 years beyond anybody's fucking aol purchases <laughs> oh i'm so glad we're past that that's funny and then promoting that uh it's gonna start as a series yeah yeah this this was this was a unicorn comic for me man when when uh when i saw this thing on the rack uh i felt like I just couldn't believe that something was so good from somebody I'd never heard of. Uh, for whatever reason, I just didn't continue to pursue it. You know what it was? Like, like I, qu I quit the call center and I embarked on my own cartooning career and had to be really frugal for a yeah. good number of years. So uh, I just wasn't buying co new comics very much at all. And, and I, I actually think it was just that. Uh, or else I probably would have kept up with everything, man. But there was like a good decade where i had to be pretty frugal to, if i wanted to like really put my all into uh making a making a career in comics and and, and new comic buying had to had to suffer because of that yeah i think most of us can relate to that i feel like i've gone through those those phases as well when it, money gets tight and uh, you want to stick to that drawing table so yeah got to make some sacrifices uh i love it i love that it's a self-published effort too i know that he's done a lot of work with dark horse but it's cool that there's some self-publishing in there because it speaks to me. It tells me a lot about the cartoonists whenever they go that route. I still don't know that Dirk Albatross isn't out there waiting <laughs> to publish. A, a picture of him in the back, so yeah. maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good to go? Yeah. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. King K Fabers, I uh, got these videos before you did, uh, but you can take care of that by joining our Patreon at the link in the description below this video. All the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, tell the people what you got out there for 2023. Street Angel, Princess of Poverty is my next release. It'll be out this summer from Image Comics and collect all the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadly Girl Alive. So you're going to want to add that to your collection. Other books that are available right now, The Plain Janes and Hulk Grand Design, a recent release. Again, grab that one before it's out of print because that might be gone for a bit once it goes. Uh, you can also join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg and see some of my latest comics there. I've been posting those each week, a couple of pages a week. So check those out. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus coming to you this holiday season, 2023. Uh, it's going to collect the three volume, I mean, the four volumes of the Hip Hop Family Tree Treasury Editions that are out there right now. But we're adding another 140 pages worth of art and content. Uh, lots of art that I drew specifically for this volume. Uh, put in your orders and pre-orders now. We need those projections to know how many of these things to print. It is at press, so we need to know these things. Uh, there are uh, two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there right now, but we're putting out the third and final installment of uh, Red Room, Crypto Killers, number one, uh, and is going to come out in May, followed by two the following month, man. Uh, four issues in this last series of Red Room Comics going to come to you on a monthly basis. Uh all stories self-contained. Uh, there are three volumes of X-Men Grand Design out there that you can uh, support. And WYSIWYG is also a comic of mine that you might find on the racks. Jimmy, what else do we got going on? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way, Jimmy. Read more comics.